Hi everyone, and welcome to the latest instalment of Geek of the Week. This is your chance to ask anything that you may have always wondered about orchestral playing or our instruments. My name is Rosemary and I'm in the second violin section of the Halle Orchestra. And my topic today is going to be violin bows. Violin bows have been around for hundreds of years and the earliest ones date back to the 16th century. But what is a bow? Well, we've got a very rudimentary DIY bow here. And as you can see, it is just a stick held together with tension, like a bow and arrow. And these incredibly curved bows are the kinds of things you might see in a Renaissance painting where there's an angel playing the violin. Um, and believe it or not, it does make a sound on the violin. Not a great one, as it is just a piece of string. But I just thought I'd demonstrate so you can hear that it is possible. <laughs> changed shape and size over the years, getting longer and heavier to reflect changes in musical style. These changes were necessary to allow for a bigger sound as music became more melodic based with sustained parts for the violin rather than it being part of the harmonic texture. In the 18th century there was a big change in the shape of the wood on the bow and this went from being convex to concave. You can see from the picture on your screen that the bow on the left, the modern bow, curves slightly inwards, while the Baroque bow on the right curves slightly outwards. So I'm just going to go back to my modern bow now to show you how we make sound. So to make any sound we need to tighten the hair of the bow, which we do using this screw at the base of the frog. And you may well know we use horse's hair on string instruments. Bow makers actually have quite a lot to do with farriers um, as part of their bow making process. and it may well explain why the heel of the bow is often referred to as the frog, which is also the term for the sort of soft heel of a horse's hoof. So with a modern bow like mine, the hair is tightly enclosed in metal and weighted at the heel. But with a Baroque bow, it's much lighter at the heel and wound with less tension, which makes it much more nimble and easier to do lots of string crossings, which are very prevalent in Renaissance and Baroque music. So if we look at the tips of the bow now, we can also see that they've changed over the years. The modern bow has a tip that's shaped a bit like a hammerhead, and it means we can have even tension all the way along the stick. So that means if we wanted to play something really romantic, like the fourth movement of Marley 9, where we want really strong sound at all parts of the bow, this stick works best. <laughs> So I can sustain right to the tip. The shape of the modern bow was standardised by a bow maker called Taut in about 1780 um, and it hasn't changed shape now in about 200 years so I think we're pretty set on this one. So that's been my Geek of the Week, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please keep your questions coming in using the hashtag Geek of the Week um, and we'll get another musician of the orchestra to get back to you.